in the words of Jose Mourinho, this is football heritage. Manchester United winning against Manchester City in a dominant fashion. There was no luck, no fluke. It was a dominant win. It was a deserving win and nobody can deny that. Here are some very interesting facts. Before this match, City hadn't lost a game in the Premier League since December. Rodri was on a 74-game unbeaten run and Pep Guardiola hadn't lost a domestic final in England ever. And yet, Ten Hag is the first one to do it. We got this win in the United way. We got it through youth and courage. Our two teenage superstars are the first ones to score for United in a FA Cup final since Ronaldo did it in 2004. And that means something. We finally have youth who are coming through into a team, who are influencing the team, who are our reason for success this season. Let's first talk about Garnacho. Garnacho was a constant threat throughout this whole game. I think some of us, when saw that lineup, we were doubting whether Garnacho can work on the right wing. But he proved that he can against City too. Garnacho was a constant threat because he scored the first goal. He assisted the Rashford goal, which was offside. Then he was also a big part in the second goal that we actually scored for the main one. And besides that, he was a constant threat going back and more importantly defending as well. Garnacho played a really good game and that has just shown his growth this season. From having his debut last season to starting like 34 or like 37 games in a row and now even playing a dominant game in the final as well. This growth of Garnacho not only in his footballing ability but also in his personality. Him maturing as a human being. That's important and that's credit to Ten Hag. If you have liked my video so far, then I would really appreciate if you can click on the like and subscribe button below to be a part of the committee and to be notified of future uploads. And the other teenage hero, Menu, with his debut this season, not even the full season, just half the season when he came back from injury, since like October, September. And since then, he has been irreplaceable in this team. Menu has shown time and time again that he has been exactly what we have wanted all this time. He is someone who is calm under pressure. He is someone who can control the ball, who can hold on to the ball, who can pass well. Not only can he go forward and score goals, but he can also sit deep and defend. Not only this, but his work rate is immense. His maturity is immense at his age. And that's just amazing and wonderful to see. That it's one of our own players who is doing all this. Our one of our own academy players is the perfect solution for the problem we have had for so long. And this is exactly what Paul Spurs is saying as well. This is what Paul Spurs posted on his Instagram after the uh, after the FA Cup final. And this is praise of the highest order. If Paul Spurs, who is one of the most gifted footballers ever, is saying that Menu has more talent than him, then that's something you should be considered. Even if you aren't being Garrett fan, that's something you have to recognize. So now the thing is, yes, we have great talents on our hand. But the biggest thing is now we have to manage them. Because they are so young, only 18 and 19, we have to be very careful going into next season that we do not overuse them so that they don't get injuries or burnout. If Ten Hag or the next manager can handle that, we have some serious talent at our hands which can lead our team to success. Next, let's talk about our captain Bruno, world-class Bruno. Bruno outclassed De Bruyne in this game in every way possible. Not only was Bruno great in the attack, you know that assist that he gave to Menu, that's a world class assist. The weight on that pass, the elegance on that pass, it's just amazing. Any other midfielder probably would have shot from that point. But Bruno had the presence of mind, his presence of the pitch to pass that ball to Menu. And that led to the goal. That shows how great he is. United isn't United without Bruno. Bruno has all the qualities of United player. He has compassion, he has the talent, and he has a work rate for it. Even in this match, he was communicating as a leader throughout the whole game, throughout all the players around him. And that shows his captain's qualities. Even Roy Keane, after the game, has said that he has been heavily criticizing Bruno and he's so happy to be proved wrong. And Bruno's form going into the final run into the season has been nothing short of amazing. He has been carrying this team in this last few games. And that just shows our strong finish now. I think it would be a huge mistake to sell Bruno in the summer. He is a very important part. And we need it for the next summer. That's 
But I honestly played. And that's on not the end. Our whole team played well. There's so many players to praise. Diego Dalo is easily a player of the season. He is the one who is the most improved this season. He is the one who has been the most consistent. And he's reliable on both the flanks. Whether you play him as a right back, whether you play him as a left back. He also inverts into the midfield. He makes those starting runs into the forward line. Diego Dalo is one of our fullbacks for sure. What happens on the other flank, like let's say we buy a new left back or what, I don't know. But Delo is amazing. Next, moving on, Scott McTominay. McTominay was silent but very effective. He ran his socks off. He was all over the pitch. He was attacking, making forward runs as a false line. He was also defending. He was marking Rodri at times to just not give him the space to be able to create chances. Then his partner, Amrabat. Now, this game showed Amrabat's actual qualities, which he hasn't shown most of this season. Whether it's because he has now adapted to the team or whether it's now that he's now fully match fit. But in this game, Amrabat was immense. He made so many tackling, so many covering runs. He held the position well. He rotated the ball well. And I don't know if it was only me, but did you also notice that Amrabat looked kind of fast in this game? Like, he was keeping up with a lot of City players. Like, he was not letting them go through on goal. So, I think this game might have swayed a lot of United fans, whether they want to keep him or not. For 15 or 20 million pounds, I think Amrabat can be a really good choice for a backup DM, especially when Casemiro is leaving. But I am still not fully sold on Amrabat that can he be consistent for a whole season like this. Like, if Amrabat can produce performances like these week in week out even as a backup I think 15 or 20 million is worth it but like this season has shown Amrabat has not been consistent so I think that's a decision for Indians to take and let's see what happens there and lastly let's talk about our center back pairing Varan and Lee Chuck. this game showed how much we missed them not only are they defensively so solid they are so fundamental to our play style see here's the thing in Ten Hag's first season, we had Lija and Varan for most of the season, right? And in that season, we had the most clean sheets in the league. We had one of the best defences in all of Europe. So, from first season to second season, we went where we have one of our worst defences ever, where we have considered the most goals ever, and we concede one of the most shots across all of Europe. And that's because we haven't had these two. The moment they start playing this game, Lija pocketed Haaland, who's double his size. He was not giving him any space. Martinez just brings that confidence into the team, that passion, and not only that, his defending and passing ability. That cannot be ignored either. Martinez was time and time again passing through Swiss City's line, making their press useless. And that's the quality which no other defender at United has. Just Martinez playing the game in, in a team just changes how we play. We can actually build from the back when we have Martinez. And it showed this game. Against City, who are one of the best teams in the world, we were able to play out from the back. And that's because of Martinez. Even Guardiola had this to say about Martinez after the game ended. And that just shows how important he is to Tenar and to this United team. Even Varan, even though he was not as you know, on focus as Martinez, Varan was still as effective. He was putting in clean tackles, he was winning headers, he was even passing the ball well. I'm really sad to see Varan go. Like, I really liked Varan as a professional, as a footballer, as a defender. But at the very least, he's going on on a high. He's going out with a trophy. Now, wrapping up the defense, I wanted to talk about Onana. You see, here's the thing about Onana. Onana made that incredible save for the Walker shot, right? And he saved a goal. But the goal that he conceded, the Doku shot, that was the most savable of them all. He got both hands on it. He saw the ball all the way and still conceded. So here's the thing. I am not sold on Onana as a keeper. You know, like a keeper, keeper who can save goals. I'm not sold on it. I think he's still making basic mistakes. On the other hand, Onana as a sweeper-keeper is great. 
his passing is great his composure on the ball is great his composure when under pressure from city players was great so i really hope during this summer break he can work on his basics because when you compare on other to the first time he came in he is vastly improved so i hope he can use his break to improve even more on his basics and come out as a more complete keeper for the next season and lastly bisaka you know the funniest thing about bisaka his i don't know why but he has this policy of slight challenges only right and it's just so amazing and funny to see in this game bisaka could not attack well right but the only thing bisaka is good at is one we went dunes and that's exactly what we needed bisaka for in this game when dobu came on he was looking for one events and that's bisaka's strong point bisaka was able to keep him quiet for majority of the game and that's very important slight challenges you know blocking the ball keeping him the silent for most of the time until the goal went in but even then i think bisaka is good for one even but going forward i do think bisaka might be sold in summer and how much money we get from him but it means to be seen but no matter which team he goes to even if he goes back to the palace i think he would be a huge asset for them i still can't believe you won nobody gave us a chance even i said in my last minute that the only chance we have is to limit city's chances and to finish the few chances we get and that's exactly what happened and this happened because of ten hag's tactics so let's finally talk about ten hag there's so much to talk about so let's start with the tactics first we all know that united you know, midfield is one of the worst every team just runs through a midfield on the other hand city has one of the strongest midfields in the world so looking at this what does ten hag decide to do he decided to employ a midfield block what that basically means is he just crowded the midfield right but tomini stayed on rodri menu and amrabat stayed on bodin and de bruyne now when these three players who got crowded city's creativity was gone city couldn't create any chances when the balls went out to the wings to bernardo and whatever they couldn't create chance because dalo and saka was doing well and since midfield was blocked their creative players couldn't do anything City got so frustrated that their first shot on target came in 36th minute. That's how amazing we were last night. That's how amazing the structure, the compactness, the concentration was. And it's not only this. Some people might have argued that Amar should have started ahead of Rashford. Even I thought that. But Rashford showed why he was in the game, right? Rashford was a constant threat because Rashford is a big game player. When Rashford is on the pitch, City has to keep the you know a few defenders back and that's why walkers was pinned back the whole game walkers walker couldn't go forward because he knew if he went forward rashford would be left alone rashford would run on on onto the goal and yes he couldn't win against walker in most of the duels but his presence being there kept Ra- kept walker back from attacking and that's really important even the rashford pass that he made to ganacho that led to a second goal and that was a really good pass Yes, he didn't look match fit, right? And that's when Ten Hag made the right substitution, changing Rashford for Hoyland. Because when Hoyland came on, he was very good in holding the ball up, from relieving the pressure. Hoyland won the ball a few times. He won the foul a few times. So he was really important in relieving the pressure, and that was the right substitution from Ten Hag. So this game showed that. what we have all been talking about this whole season right what the media has been ignoring injuries when ten hag has his team he can play good football he played good football and he won a trophy which is the most important thing yes we cannot excuse all his you know mistakes and the transfers and you know all of the other stuff but there is context ten hag can do a good job if he has the good players we have had the most injuries this season most injuries and it's not only that we have also had the takeover drama we had the sancho drama he had to deal with ronaldo we have had two january windows where we have not made a single signing and on top of all this there's a to- there's a toxic media like let's talk about the media right the media english media especially is a disgrace 
we i made a shorts a couple of weeks ago talking about how toxic media is targeting united and ten hag and it showed once again because 24 hours before fa cup final articles after articles coming out that ten hag is getting sad so many journalists publishing the same thing 24 hours before fa cup final and that's a disgrace that's something to destabilize the team i don't know how did this news get leaked people were saying that it's a leak from chelsea camp some were saying it's a leak from mckenna camp i don't know where but this held united in zero ways and besides all this the ten hag still went into the game with confidence he still won the game but even after winning the game even the post match conferences were like i don't know what's going on through these journalists minds right gary lenica and alan sheeran post match conference they're asking about why is your team finishing eighth and asking ten hag are you getting sad like what are these journalists thinking like do they not have any professionalism where were these questions for pochettino where are these questions for eddie how like why is it only ten hag who's been who's been treated like this time and time again that it gets targeted by these toxic media and it's just so frustrating to see and i'm so glad that ten hag is fighting back in all of the conferences right he went against his journalists pointing them out directly saying to journalists media that you have no football knowledge saying it to share us face that you have our managers and players for no reason and that's true the media is a disgrace in england because after all of these leaks and news about ten hag getting sacked for sure david onsin came out with an article saying that there's no decision made yet and in your still take a week or two to decide on it so what was all the leaks even about just to destabilize the team just for more toxicity like that's just so embarrassing now talking about ten hag i really backed up ten hag i want ten hag to say i've been saying it throughout the season in all of my videos that ten hag can take us forward ten hag can lead us to success he needs his players and he needs a proper structure we have played this season without a left back without a backup striker with the most injuries we have ever had and he won us a trophy in a dominant way and the managers who are on the list for you know the replacement none of them fill me with confidence i don't know how but kenai is getting linked to united job when he hasn't even managed a top flight club how much Tuchel is like a very, very fiery character. Every cup he has gone to, he has broken down the relationships when he has left. Then there's Pochettino, who has just been sacked from Chelsea for finishing six. So it's like there are a few, few more names, but none of them give me with confidence. I know Ten Hag is better than all of them. None of the managers on the list have done more than Ten Hag. So I really hope Ineos makes the right decision and backs Ten Ten Hag. You know, in our worst ever season, we have now won a trophy. We have stopped Klopp's farewell parade. We have stopped City from winning the double. We have won more trophies than Arteta. We have knocked Chelsea to Conference League and knocked Newcastle out of Europe completely. And that just fills me with so much joy. You know, against our rivals, we have done something to damage all of them. and that's just joy as a united fan so let me know in the comments down below what was the most impressive thing to you about this match about this you know fa cup journey and if you have watched my videos so far then i would really appreciate if you can click on the like and subscribe button below and if you want to see the match reaction of our win against brighton and talking about city and prince jadis then you can click on the link right here i will see you all again in my next video thank you for watching and supporting me throughout this season See you next time. Goodbye.